What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We back with the boxing clinic. One time for the one time. Y'all know what it is. Shout out to that LDBC and the YTBC. We working. And um, Kel Brook is called out. Jerry Swift, her, Jamel, Charlo, Aries Lonnie, Laura, any champion at 154 pounds during middleweight, they can get it. Call him the can man, special K the can man. <laughs> and um, I remember him uh saying before he decided to make the jump up 54, believing that a mere Khan fight can actually be um a maid that um you know he said he was a little bit tentative to move up to 154 pounds. You know, he was gonna stick it out to 147, said he felt it was too small, and you know. He didn't know if anybody was going to want to do a catchweight. He wanted to do a catchweight with some guys. All of a sudden, his opinion has changed. Eddie Hearn tried to give him to move up and drop his belt versus Earl Spence. Um, you know, before the Spence fight, but you know, he said I worked too hard for it, and um, you know, grabbed his nuts and uh, you know, he did what he had to do. Man, he earned a lot of respect from everybody, especially fans in America who thought he was ducking all those years after pulling out with Devin Alexander and. Pulling out with Sean Porter and, and you know how the story went uh, if you follow his career. But now it seems that he wants a nice little tune-up fight, maybe one or two tune-up fights. I'm going to link the article to the description so y'all know that it's true. And, um, you know, then he wants to go at one of the champions. Now, I don't think uh, any of these champions won't waver to fight him. Won't he? Kell Brook brings some money, and I think he can bring some of these guys across uh, the pond and come make some money, or he can make some money in the United States versus him. Um, how he stacks up versus, versus these guys is a totally different story, but, um, you know, I just did the video about an hour ago talking about how, you know, he was promised to Miguel Cotto. Well, he, he felt his team felt like the Miguel Cotto fight was going to happen, uh, December 9th. Um, I mean, this, this December 3rd, whatever it is, this Saturday, excuse me. They felt like that fight was going to happen. I talked to, they talked about it. You know, three weeks after he lost to Earl Spence, that they felt they liked the prospects of him moving up. That mean Eddie Hearn and Golden Boy had some talks about the fight. Um, you know, he said it fell through for whatever reason it was. They might have wanted to get some options on um, on Kell Brook or work with Eddie Hearn to promote Kell Brook. And you know, for whatever reason, I'm just you know, jump, I'm just jumping to the conclusion here that um, that didn't work. And Eddie Hearn just solely wanted to promote Kell Brook, and that was a smart move because that belt is about to be vacant. And uh, Eddie Hearn could work his magic and make Lima Smith versus Kell Brook happen for that belt over there in uh, in the UK. Lima Smith fought for that belt versus Canelo. Um, I think he won the belt versus somebody. I don't know who he won the belt. But Lima Smith and Kell Brook, that'll be a solid fight for Kell Brook at this tune-up fight. And uh, why not? You know, why not? Um, but let's say he does win that belt and he wants to unify um, or he just wants to go after one of the champions after a tune-up or two. You know, what what would be his best chances? Um, it's tough. I think his best chances would be a versus Aries Lonnie Lar. I know y'all guys would probably call me crazy, but um, that's what I think. You know, I think Hurd is just too big for him. You know, Hurd would be a flashback of Triple G and, and, and Errol Spence, and I'll explain that in one second. Um, you know, I think... I think Laura is getting older. You know, um, he still looked good versus uh, Terrell Goucher. But Goucher did land some shots on him. Um, and I know Kell Brook is a boxer puncher. Um, and he likes to fight at his pace. And I think that's what, what will give him a chance versus Aries Knight Laura. Laura don't fight at a high pace. If you step the pace up and you press the action versus Kell Brook, he can't fight at his pace. He gets tired and you can beat him. You get uncomfortable. With, with Aries Knight Laura... I like to fight that slow pace, land a few clean shots around, take the round. I think Kell Brook can kind of, um, you know, box with Arizona Lara some, you know, and um, and, and kind of steal some rounds depending on where they had a fight at. If you can get it to the UK, he can, uh, you know, get a close decision versus Lara. You know, Boucher landed some good shots to the body, and um, he had his times, you know. And so does so did a lot of other fighters with with uh with um Aries Lonnie Lara. People forget Carlos Molina, a lot of people thought he beat Aries Lonnie Lara. You know what I'm saying? And um I think that would be Kell Brooks' best shot. I'm not saying that Aries Lonnie Lara is the weakest fighter in the division or the weakest champion in the division. I'm just saying Kell Brook's style matches better with him. With just with her, as far as him and Kell Brook, he'd destroy Kell Brook. Uh, a lot of people won't believe me. They'd be like, oh, Kell Brook uh, you know, tag him like he did Golovkin. Hey, Jared Swift Hart is big as hell. He's 6'1". He's about three inches, four inches taller than Gennady Golovkin. 
and he's strong as crap, you know, and he would just keep coming and he would break Kell Brook face again. And that's how I look at it. You know, he the pressure would be too much for Kell Brook. It would be a flashback at Earl Spence and Gennady Golovkin. And he might have a mental breakdown. And he might quit again. You know, he might take that punishment. He might quit again. And Hurd is working on his head movement. He knows where his weakness is at in, in the ring. And um, he's steadily probably going to improve. Remember, he didn't have a large amateur background. And that would be a fight that, you know, Kell Brook might have wanted to stay away from. And he's not bringing as much money to the table with some of the other champions. You know, it is what it is. Now, you could set him up versus Jamel Charlo. That would be another death sentence. I think that would be the most, I think that would be the worst fight for him, you know. Um, you know, Charlo can botch, bring pressure. You know, he do anything Kell Brook can do, but better. You know, he land on that face and he's starting to in- increase his power. Now he becoming, he, not a lot of people starting to recognize him for his power, but we knew him for his boxing ability and his defense early on when people didn't follow his career. Now he's bringing the offensive, um, attributes to the table he's sitting down on his punches now and he and he knocking cats out he, he knocked Kell Brook out about five six rounds probably not even that um so I don't like the prospect of seeing Kell Brook versus any of these guys but if I had to rank them I think originally Laura be the most winnable fight and that's saying a lot because he a lot of people would heavily favor originally Laura just for style matchup that's why I think second winnable fight might be first is Jared Swift and then third versus Jamel Charlo I think they're all gonna be tough for him uh, could he win some of these fights? I don't think so, in my opinion. Um, I pretty much think his career is over with if he can't make 47 or get Americana in the ring. But, you know, like I said, he could fight for the vacant title and rule over the w- the WBO uh, and fight Lima Smith. They can make that happen. Um, Curtis Stevens is coming down. Maybe after he get a tune-up, that'll be a nice little crossroad fight for him. Um, Julian J-Rock Williams, that'll be a good fight for him. I don't know how he would fare for it versus him. J-Rock showed a lot of chinks in his defensive armor and his armor in period versus Ishe Smith. Now, Ishe Smith, if he continues to fight, would be a good fight for Kell Brook. Um, you know, Erickson Lubin, after a few fights back, maybe in 2019, that would be a good fight for Kell Brook. Um, Austin Trout is looking to fight somebody a little bit more, 100, naturally 154 pounds after fighting Jamil. I mean, Jamal Charlo and Big Jerry Swift her two big guys who can easily make middleweight or perhaps even super middleweight at some point in their career. Um, Austin Trout and Kell Brook, that would be an excellent fight for Kell Brook. Um, like I said, Lyman Smith, hopefully for the WBO title for him. If Eddie Hearn could work his magic. But ultimately, when you're talking about the elite guys, he might have to wait unless he gets the WBO for some of these champions to move on and move up, which is real reasonable at the next year. They could if they start to fight each other or they see the fight's not going to happen. They could take the Jamal Charlo route and just move up and start to compete at 160. Because a lot of these guys are big 154 pounders. Or they've been there for a very, very long time and might need some comfort and move up to 160 and get a new landscape, but, you know, it's going to be tough for Kell Brook, let me know what y'all think, this is the Boxing Clinic, we gone.